Hey there, THP. Hey there, THP 494 and 598. We are up to some mischief here today. All right, so what are we after? Uh, we're going to do this in three parts. The first part we're going to think about is how we build something like this, how we create the visual element of this, and this uh, also how we think about uh, creating something where we have a lot of parameters that we can drive and manipulate. Once we've built that, we're going to look at how do we take something uh, like that and do something more fun with that. How do we create an array of those? How do we uh, create multiple copies of that based off of some rules? Um, and then populate those, uh, those rules with a data set. So we have art that's kind of making itself in some respect, right? Uh, once we've done that, we'll take that a step farther um, and push ourselves to consider, all right, well, how do we apply some of the other techniques that we've learned in terms of selecting these? Um, so we can just go ahead and pull this out of an existing set. And last but not least, we'll go ahead and look at another method. Uh, and while these might look the same, this actually treats uh, our data set more as a group of presets rather at, than uh, a kind of selectable group, the way that we might think about it otherwise. So to get started with all that, the very first thing that we're going to have to do is build the prototype. We're going to need to build the thing that we're actually going to do uh, some of our work with. So I've got a new network here up and running. And what I should tell you is that today, how we're going to do this uh, is today I am going to work real fast. I'm going to program hard and fast and I'm going to trust the fact that you have got uh, the ability to watch this again and again as many times in fact as you need. Because we're going to place the emphasis on actually building this thing and we'll pull apart the why and how a little bit later on. All right, so to get started, let's go ahead and add a uh, base component. And I'm going to add a base component right here out the gate because I know at some point I'm going to have some data that I'm going to work with. So I'm going to just let that sit there and hang out for a hot second. Next, I'm going to add a container. I'll drop my container here into my network. And I'm going to give my container a size of 500 by 500. I also already know, by the way, that on, for the panel, at some point, I'm going to give it a background top that we're going to call BG. Um, that is going to come for sure. So we've got a few things here kind of set up and ready for us. So let's dive in and think about what we're actually going to make inside of this. I'm going to use the H key to go to the home in my network. I'm going to do some real-time rendering. So I want a camera. I want a light. I want a geometry. And we'll just go ahead and get these arranged here. I also know, happen to know, that I need to render this. So there we go. We've got our render uh, up and running here. Uh, while we're here, let's go ahead and dive for a hot second right inside of our, our geometry. In fact, for better or for worse, I like my geometry in the middle. That's where I just like to put it. Uh, we all get picky the longer we program. Okay, so let's move inside of our geometry here. So I can see I've got my display and render, render flags on. I'm going to turn those off. I'm going to add a null. I'm going to turn my display and render flags on for my null. This is the way I like to work with geometries because then I can insert things here inside of the chain without a problem. I know that I need this to be a polygon um, and if I make it viewer active and look at it for a second. I won't, don't want it to be quite so donut shaped. I want it to be a little bit bigger here. I want it to have a more, kind of a more of a ring quality to it. And let's yeah, something more like that, maybe. Excellent. And I might just go ahead and make these 2 and 0.5. Excellent. Next, I know that I'm going to need some noise. So I'm going to add some noise to this particular torus. I'm actually going to go ahead and turn off the translation for my noise, because I don't need it yet. And then the last operator I'm going to insert is a facet because I want this to have a kind of chunky uh, polygon, kind of polygon kind of quality to it. So I want unique points, and I want to compute the normals. So if I make this viewer active, I can get a look at how it's actually showing up. All right. So far, so good. If we back here outside of our network, we can see that we are, in fact, making that. And I'm going to use my uh, geo to go ahead. Well, let's use our camera first, and let's back away a little bit more so we can see all of this thing. And I'm going to rotate this geometry, uh, yeah, by 90 degrees so we can actually see it a little bit better. Excellent. I need a little bit more space here with my camera. Yeah, maybe even 15 for good measure. Excellent. 
The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the dimensions of this. I'm going to actually have this render at 1,000 by 1,000 for right now. And then I'm specifically and purposely making this a different resolution than my uh, container, right? Well, remember that my container has a size of 500 by 500, and in this case, my render is uh, 1,000 by 1,000. Now, while these still maintain the same aspect ratio, right, they're still one by ones, I've got different resolutions uh, between the two of these. Now, this is something that's probably not uncommon if we think about the fact that we might want to have a container that we can interact with that's going to live on a smaller display, right, say like our laptop or an external monitor, and it's going to feed a video signal to a projector that's going to be full screen or much larger resolution. So we're going to kind of practice that here a little bit as we think about this. Okay. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add a Fong material because I know that I want to apply this as a material and out the gate I know that I want this to have a wireframe quality to it. I want the line width to be 2. I've got some kind of ideas already about what it is that I want to make, right? And let's, uh, let's readjust our camera here right now that we've got a better sense of what this is looking like. And we changed our resolution around. Okay, that's pretty all right. Okay, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to build a feedback system, and feedback for me this time is actually going to be about rotations. Um, and I'm going to do that here by using a transform in my feedback loop. We're going to composite this on top. Oops, not a constant. Composite. For my composite, I want to put uh, my feedback loop on top. I'm going to put my original on bottom. Instead of multiplying, what I want to do is I want to add these two together. We can see here that I've got this kind of like bright quality. We'll go ahead and create that feedback loop. And now what we're going to do is in this transform, I'm going to go ahead and uniformly scale this down a little bit, right? And find the right dimension for that. I think we're going to come in at 0.5. And then I also want this to rotate a little bit. And we'll go ahead and give this maybe like 30 degrees of rotation per feedback. Excellent. So now we're, we're getting somewhere with the kind of look and feel of that. Next, I want to go ahead uh, and give this a little bit of a glow. So to do that, I am going to apply a blur. And I think I want about like 17 on this blur here. I'm going to composite one more time my original and my new one, and we're going to go ahead and make these additive, right? This gives us that kind of like softy, glowy kind of quality. Some people really hate it. Uh, I happen to like it in this particular case. Uh, we are going to go ahead and we're going to add a resolution top here also. This is one of my favorite effects. So we'll take this resolution here, and we're going to go ahead and set a custom resolution. I want this to be the width of the operator that's called render1, right? I want render1 to be defining its width. So I want it to be a, as wide as the original, and I want it to only be one pixel tall, right? So now I've got this kind of like barcode quality out of it. And I'm gonna com going to composite one more time. I'm going to stack these two together, make sure that they are in the right order. Excellent. This is in one, this is in two. I'm going to do over. We're going to see that's still not right, and that's because the fixed layer is set as input 2. We're going to change that to input 1. Bada bing, bada boom. We are almost there. Now, uh, I happen to know that I want to composite one more time. We're going to see why later on, but trust me, we're going to want to composite one more time. We're going to want a null, and this null we're going to call BG for background. And if we back out here, we can already see that we're getting pretty close. We're, we're starting down that path. All right, uh, while we're here, let's go ahead and add an Analyze. And to this Analyze, we're going to add a level. And again, we don't know why we have these yet. Don't worry, trust me, I will I'll follow through on why we have these. We're going to see here in not very long. And we're actually going to take this level, and we're going to plug it into the composite. We'll put it on top, uh, and we'll go ahead and call this Additive. And we'll, when we get back to this, we'll see why we've got this kind of stuck and waiting over here. All right, let's come over here to the right for a little bit, and let's see what we're all about. So I'm going to add some noise. Well, actually, before I even any, add any noise, what I want to add is a ramp. And I want this ramp 
All right, I want to use this ramp to define the uh, color map for my fong. So we know how to do that so far, right? And what we can see then, if we start to play with this ramp, is we can begin to see that if we add additional keys here to our ramp, uh, that allows us to introduce other colors here into our composition, right? And we can start to really play with how we're using this gradient. Excuse me to drive the color that's then uh, being applied in our, our composition here. Well, this is all well and good, but what happens if I want to be able to say, like, drive this ramp um, algorithmically, or not even algorithmically, but based on some very specific rules? If I notice this little purple button here, I can see that there is a key, a ramp key, that's docked to this particular operator. Uh, and so these keys are actually defining this ramp. And if we make this viewer active, we could actually change our values here, right? So I could say 0.25. We can see that change the position of this line. This line right here, right? We are going to be able to change that to 0.75. And now we've got uh, four equidistant keys that exist here for us, right? 0, 0 0.25, 0 0.75, and 1. I could even, if I wanted, I could uh, add above, right? And I could 0.25 or a point, yep, just two, or point five, pardon me. And if I did one, 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 and one, we'd have white, right? So that's one way that I can edit this ramp, but that's a little bit cumbersome. I would really like to come up with a method for uh, this to kind of do it by itself a little bit. And specifically, I want to use some noise to do that. Okay, so what am I really yammering on here about? Let's dive in and take a look. I'm going to take this noise and I'm going to go ahead and give it a very specific size. I want it to be four samples uh, tall and one sam excuse me, four samples wide and one sample tall. I want to be able to see this a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and set the uh, viewer smoothness to be the nearest pixel so I can see these as ch -ch -ch -ch, the four chunks that they are. And I want to use these four chunks to define my 0, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, and 0.75 positions. And then I want to wrap all the way back around and use the first sample in the row to be the last key. Uh, and when we finally make that, when we kind of dig into that a little bit more, we'll see why that's so powerful and interesting. In the meantime, we need to actually do a little bit of programming to make that work. Before we get there, let's go ahead and change this noise to be not monochrome. Got some color noise here. Excellent. I like I like the, the cut of our jib so far. So how can we start to do this? Well, first let's grab a text stat and let's learn a little bit of Python while we're here. One of the things that we can do, let's go ahead and view our text port, is that we can, um, with a fairly simple command here, we can ask for what's going on in each one of these pixels. We can sample them. In this case, I'm going to use uh, the following way to do that. I'm going to go ahead and identify the operator, noise1. One. Noise1 one is who I want. I'm going to ask for uh, a sample of that operator. Yowza. And I need to define the x coordinate for that, 0, and the y coordinate, 0, for that. Now, if I go ahead and ask Touch Designer to print this for me, print, we'll go ahead and print that to the text port. When I run this script, we'll be able to see that lo and behold, we have our four values, R, G, B, and A, for this pixel right here. All right, if we changed our script and we use uh, square brackets, we can actually ask for, we'll run the script again, oops. I put those in the wrong place, excuse me. The square brackets need to go right next to this guy and the parenthesis at the end. If we run our script now, we can see we're retrieving just the R value. We can get just green. You uh, can imagine that we can get just blue and alpha in the same method. All right, so we're going to use that to our advantage as we start to build a way to go ahead and ask for those things. And in fact, what we're going to do is we're going to use the evaluate dat to help us get there. And we're going to take advantage of the fact that we can drive our evaluate dat with two tables. Um, and we'll see how this works in one hot second. So 
what I need to do is I need to create a table that is formatted just the way this ramp key is formatted. I need position R, G, B, and A to run here across the top. Uh, and then I need to think about the position as a scale value of 0 to 1 on the left-hand side, and then these values in here to also be scaled values 0 to 1, defining my uh, channels. Okay. So to get started, I'm going to go ahead and uh, view the contents or edit the contents here. I'm going to use a uh, text editor to help make this a little bit more straightforward for me. But we could do this here just inside of Touch as well. We're going to do RGB and A. Let's go ahead and save that. Excellent. We can see that's populated our table. And the next thing that I want to do is I need to make a table that is uh, the number of rows that are in this noise, right? And in fact, I wanted to, well, we'll see. So let's go ahead and give it some exact dimensions. The number of rows I want it to have is equal to the operator noise one, its width. And this gives me four, right? So that only gives me here to three. And I want, to I want all the way up to five. I want five rows. I want to add two more rows to this particular table because I need to compensate for the fact that I've got a header row. And then I need to get all the way to my last key in the one position. Um, so in a kind of counterintuitive way, what I'm going to do is I'm only going to go to four in this particular table. We'll see why in a second. So roll with me. I'm going to go ahead and plug this into the first inlet on my eval, and then I need to actually write the rules that I'm going to use here in my uh, second table. So let's edit this. I'm going to use me input dot cell, right? Or, pardon me, me dot input cell uh, as the first thing that I'm going to use here inside of these rules. Uh, and I'm going to do that because what this is really doing is it's telling the evaluate dat that what I want to have happen is I want to use the input values for this whole row across the top. So the way that eval works is it's going to evaluate the first set of rules and it will repeat those rules until it finds an interruption or another reason to start doing other rules here. So let's go ahead uh, and think about a few other things that we want to do with this, right? So let's go ahead and edit the contents of this again. Because in our next row, the first thing I need to think about is I need to think about position. I need to think about how I can generate these values right over here, 0 0.25, 0 0.75. And I can do that um, in this very lovely way, right? So what I want to do is I want to start by thinking about uh, the input row. So me.input row. I want to find my input row and I want to subtract one. So in that case, right here, in this, the case of this row, the first place this is going to run, this is my input row. And let's go ahead, let's, you know, for fun games and profit, we'll just start with input row. We'll save that. We can see here that that's going to give us one, two, three, four. All right, so you can imagine where we're going to go next, right? So my input row minus one, I'm going to divide that by the number of sap samples that are over in noise one dot width. And what we should end up with here is 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75. One isn't here, and that is OK. Don't worry, we'll get back to it. The next thing I need to do is I need to use this kind of sample method to give me R, G, B, and A. So we need to write those rules here inside of our uh, table. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and let me make sure I get rid of all these tabs. Tab, and I want to go ahead and look for the operator. It's called noise1. Helps if I spell it right. And I'm going to sample noise1. And this time, I want the x position, right? Uh, the x coordinate is going to be equal to me.input row minus 1. And the y position is going to be 0. Excellent. And out of this, I'm going to want 0. I want red. So if we save that, we should see, oh, we have an error. Excellent. We haven't we've done something a little bit wrong. Me input row minus 1. Oh, we just have an extra parenthesis in there. Sorry about that. There we go. So fixing that parenthesis, we can see there we've grabbed all of our red values. Okay. So we're getting close. 
Rather than rewrite this all over again, I'm just going to go ahead and copy it. Tab, paste, one for green, paste, two for blue, paste, three for alpha. Let's save it and let's see if we've got it. There we go. Our R, G, B, and A values are shown up here. Now the last thing we need, right, is we need our last row in all of this. And the last row, I want to repeat the first sample. So we're going to essentially do the same kind of idea. We're going to use a table that, and we're going to use an eval. And this time around, what we're going to do is the evaluate that we're going to, uh, the evaluation that we want to do, and let's uh, edit the contents of this, is I'm going to go ahead and use reuse the same thing, right? But rather than, well, first off, I need to define the position. The position is one tab. So then this is my red channel. And then rather than looking at my input row, I know that I want this to go all the way back to the very first sample, right? So let's copy, tab, paste, tab, paste, tab, paste. This is going to be three, two, one. Let's save that. We can connect that here to the bottom uh, inlet in our eval, and there we have uh, our one again, right? And those guys should match. We're going to merge these two guys together. We're going to plug these two in, and now what we should end up with, we'll make a little more space here, is we should see that we've put together a table that's um, 0 to 1 and the values for that. Now, why did we do this like big circuitous kind of route to get to this particular place? And the reason that we did that is with our noise, now what we could do if for ever, any reason we decide to turn up the number of samples or turn down the number of samples in our noise, that directly drives our gradient without us having to do any additional work to this, right? That's, that's the reason we went through the headache of programming this the right way. Let's go ahead and attach this to a null. And we'll see why here in one second. We're going to attach this to a null. We're going to call this ramp key. We'll right click on this other one. We will undock it. We're going to delete it. We'll bring our new ramp key up here. We'll drag it onto our ramp. And lo and behold, we now have a new ramp key that is defined, in fact, by our noise. We can get rid of this text out. We don't need it anymore. This means that now, right, so just like we looked at before, as we start to drive the seed of this noise, we drive the period of the noise, any of the changes we make to the noise uh, then directly drive our gradient, which in turn drive what's going on here in our composition. Now, I promised you that we had this analyzed here for some strange reason. And what I want to do is I want to grab my noise and I'm going to plug it into my analyze. And I'm going to look for just the average color, right? The average of those four pixels put together. It's going to give me this nice, lovely color here. And now I'm going to take my uh, level and the post page. I think I want to dial the opacity of this down to say like not 0.5, right? And that gives me a little bit more uh, something, something to this than if I didn't have it. I just happen to like this particular look and effect, which is why we're doing that. It's up to you if you don't want to do it in your network. You don't have to. I just like the way this pans out. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn this off for a hot second. So we should see now that we have built our visual uh, container so far. Let's call this master one. So we know that this is our kind of prototype that we're building. Okay, so we're getting close. We've kind of got one step down here. The next thing we're going to think about is how we build a control panel to drive this. All right, so hang on to your socks, everyone. I'll see you in the next chapter.